enjoyed its usual meal outside, but avoided sitting on the snow by climbing on a wooden platform. On Monday, Moscow saw its heaviest snowfall in 28 years, a month's worth of snow in one day. But this guy wasn't bothered one bit. And that's this week's edition of the... Thank you, Louie and Oliver. Oh, that was so At least cute. they were working. Mark's just cruising around the Caribbean. <laughs> Thank you for your help this week. Mark will be back on Monday, everybody. Enjoy the beautiful sunset. Have a great weekend. News 3 Now at 5 starts right now. Right now, no business behind the wheel. We'll explain why the driver police think caused this deadly crash should have never been there to begin with. And so many of you have been so generous today, helping raise money to support those devastated by tornadoes down south. And it's not too late to help if you haven't already. And set up for a smashing success. We'll go live to Ohio where the Badger women's volleyball team is just one win away from being the national champions. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Tonight, we've learned the identities of the people killed in a crash on Cottage Grove Road earlier in the week. Three people were killed and another was injured in that crash. Police believe one of those victims, David Hannaway, ran a red light while speeding and crashed into an SUV, killing two people inside. Those two people were Mark and Kathy Brilski. A medical examiner said they both died from their injuries in the crash. Hannaway was also killed in the crash and a passenger in his car was severely injured. The surviving passenger in Hannaway's car told police Hannaway appeared to be emotionally distraught before the crash. Court records show Hannaway did not have a license to drive a car at the time of the crash. It was suspended after he was charged with eluding police in a separate case back in August. Madison police did make it clear today Hannaway was not running from police at the time of the crash on Cottage Grove drive. Court records show Hannaway posted a $500 bond on August 4th and was scheduled to go to trial in that case next year. We'll take a closer look at Hannaway's driving story coming up tonight on News 3 Now at 6. Well, it has been a wild week in weather. Some more seasonable weather today. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti joining us now with her you know, doing his best Dana Fulton impersonation <laughs> from the weather patio. Dana? Gary got a little taller and a little blonder. <laughs> guys. Uh, it does certainly feel like December outside right now. We have some flurry chances as we look ahead to tonight and early Saturday. Some steadier snowfall off to the northwest, uh, but we could see a few snowflakes swirling around here later on tonight and early Saturday morning. Here's a live look of our, our beautiful sunset. We had a really nice red and orange sky over the last about 30 minutes or so. Now we're past sunset and, and things, of course, cooling down significantly yet again overnight. 27 right now for us in Madison with our breeze coming in from the northeast. A pretty calm spot for us this evening. It's seasonally cold for your weekend, a mainly dry stretch expected all the way until Christmas Day, but we might see some light snow chances developing for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. We'll take a closer look at what's ahead with that small chance in just a few minutes. All right, Dana, thank you. Former Minnesota police officer Kim Potter testified today in her own trial. Potter is facing manslaughter charges for shooting Dante Wright during a traffic stop back in April. Wright later died from his injuries. Potter said the shooting was an accident. She thought she was holding her taser. She took the stand earlier today and broke down while describing what happened. It just went chaotic. I remember yelling, taser, 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 and nothing happened. And then he told me I shot. Potter said officers were trying to arrest Wright because he had an outstanding warrant. She said she was going to tase him because he jumped back in the car and tried to escape. The most pressing threat to a Madison restaurant's survival may not be the pandemic. Instead, it's a landlord that seemingly cannot pay to keep the building open. And that's led to whiplash for tenants at 131 West Wilson, including the owner of Pizons, who is now seeking legal means to keep his restaurant open. Brad Hamilton live in downtown Madison tonight to explain, Brad. 
Well, it's deja vu as back in September, they evacuated this building behind me, fearing it could collapse. And then again on Tuesday, they did the same thing. They evacuated the entire building. And a city official told us this time, it's due to the landlord's inability to pay those who have been working to fix the issue. Now the building first closed September 10th when people inside felt it swaying. Uh, inspection reports show significant issues with the concrete in the underground parking garage was the result of the issues. The building owner did pay for the temporary supports to go in and it reopened back in October. But on Tuesday, that turn left people such as Wally Borowski, who owns Paisan's restaurant here, shut out. We've committed my, my family, my staff, my extended family. It's kind of all rolled into one. And it's been, it's been the thing that I have done day in, day out for the last 46 years. Borowski says he does not know what the future holds for his restaurant. He did file a civil suit against the ownership group, and yesterday a judge ordered they had to pay for all the monitoring and fixing. Now, we did reach out to Rice Investments, which owns this building behind me here. They did respond, but responded with no comment. Brad Hamilton live downtown. Brad, thank you. Peng Hare, the uh, CEO of the Hmong Institute, announced he will be running for Wisconsin Lieutenant Governor today. Her re released a statement saying Wisconsin needs to build a sustainable, fair economy and strong communities where everyone has a chance to succeed and he's ready to make it happen. Hare has also served as a member of Governor Evers' Early Childhood Advisory Council and Racial Equity Working Group on Homelessness. Exciting news for Badger fans. The volleyball team has made it to the NCAA championship game. Jordan Reed joins us live now from Ohio with more on what the game needs to them. Hi, Jordan. Well, it all comes down to this. One more match, and for many, it's the last dance together. That's something that Dana Recky, Sydney Hilly, and Kelly Sheffield have all thought about, how this will be their final run together. You know, just a little while ago, Sydney Hilly said that she's super excited that last night went in the Badgers' favor because it means she gets to keep playing with her best friends and, you know, ball out in one of the coolest environments. Her response speaks to that overall message that Wisconsin tries to practice each and every day. That's to practice gratitude. And it's really tough when you're in a grind and when things, when you're in the middle of competition, but of, of, of going through the season of appreciating what we all have and uh, what we get to do and what we get to be a part of and how many people are supportive of us. And... Uh, uh, and so we, we try to recognize that as, as we've kind of gone through the journey. And so doing that right now wouldn't be anything different. Uh and the countdown continues to that first serve, which is set for tomorrow night right here at Nationwide Arena at 6.30. All right, Jordan Reed live in Columbus. Jordan, thank you. Thank you, Jordan. New reports say 77 people have now died from a string of tornadoes in Kentucky. Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir said the most recent death was recorded in Lyon County. As of today, the state was down to just one missing person. Bashir says more than 1,300 state workers and National Guard members have been mobilized to areas hit by the storms. Badger basketball player Chris Vogt is from Mayfield, Kentucky and lived one mile from where the tornado touched down. He said after hearing the news, he immediately created a GoFundMe to help. So the amount of support and uh, help I've gotten from that is amazing, but I don't want to take that away from who my, in my eyes are the real heroes, and that's all the frontline workers, those that are putting their health and safety uh, behind other people, and they're trying to just serve others and help in any way they can. So far, the GoFundMe has raised over $159,000. As Kentucky Communities Work to Rebuild News Street Now has a way for people here in Wisconsin to pitch in and help. Meteorologist Chris Reese joins us now with a preview. Chris? Yeah, we've been hosting a virtual telethon all day long to help those who are impacted by the devastating tornadoes. Coming up, I'll speak with Laura McGuire from the Red Cross to explain what help is needed. More details after the break. And later, hospitals nationwide are short on blood supplies. Find out how you can help. That's tonight at 6. And stocks close lower on Wall Street, marking their third losing week in the last four. Investors have been taking money off the table as the Federal Reserve moves to dial back the stimulus. We'll be right back. Now at 6.
Century House. Give $50 or more to charity and receive $400 off stressless Mayfair recliners and office chairs, $200 off any stressless recliner and office chair, and $200 off each stressless sofa seat. Don't wait. It's time for stressless. Donate and save at the Century House, 3420 University Avenue in Madison. Stop whitening your smile the old-fashioned way with strips and trays that can take 30 minutes to an hour. I'm Jonathan Greenhut, the CEO of Paraswabs. When I met Dr. Ginnaker and he introduced me to Paraswabs and I saw how effective they were and how easy they were to use, I knew we had to share it with the world. Paraswabs was clinically studied to whiten natural teeth as well as stained caps, crowns, and veneers. It's so effective, it works on stains caused by coffee, tea, red wine, and and even smoking. For those of you who have that one stained tooth that's darker than the rest, Power Swabs can target that area using swab precision. I really love the fact that you're able to go individually on each tooth and make sure that it's going to be wider. So this holiday season, if you have yellowing between your teeth or coffee stains near your gum line, just snap, swab, and smile. And each five-minute application, you'll see whiter teeth. So stop whitening your smile the old-fashioned way with strips and trays that can take 30 minutes or an hour and start using the Power Swab's 5-Minute Solution. Just snap, swab, and smile. After just 7 days, the results were awesome. Power Swab's was easy to use every day, and each day I could see it better and better, and from beginning to end, it's definitely wider. Uh, and they look clean, they feel clean, um, and people have made comments about it, which is nice. Call for your five-minute solution to whiter teeth. This holiday season, order Power Swabs and receive up to 40% off the retail price. Get a free Power Swabs Quick Stick Pen with your order. The Quick Stick Pen is your on-the-go solution to help prevent stains from adhering to your teeth after drinking coffee, tea, or even after smoking. And in addition to saving up to 40% on your purchase and your free Quick Stick Pen, get free shipping by ordering now. Dial the number on your screen or visit powerswabs.com today. Tonight at 6, a high rise in Madison is closed for the second time. How this is affecting a local restaurant and what the city says is still wrong with the building. And this holiday season, instead of ho, 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 it may be oh, no, no, no for the city. We'll explain at 6. Tornadoes cut a deadly path through four southern states and now thousands are faced with the daunting task of rebuilding. Please join me in helping them. Donate today to News 3 Now's Tornado Relief Telethon and send home to a place that's near and dear to my heart. For the past week, we have shown you the devastation from Kentucky left behind there and the surrounding states as well. The governor in Kentucky saying he expects it will take months, if not years, to fully recover. Our own Chris Reese lived in western Kentucky for a good portion of his life, and he's working with the Red Cross this week to organize a virtual fundraiser that we are very proud to be a part of. Chris? Yeah, thank you. It's just been an incredible day seeing how much we've been able to raise so far. I've uh, been watching. And as of the last update, we are at $39,662 raised all by you guys. And so thank you so, so much. Uh, it means a lot to me. And I know it means a lot to a lot of my friends and family in Kentucky. They've been talking about it. They've been sending me messages saying, you know, what the folks in Wisconsin are doing just means so much to us. One friend even cried about it. So it means so much. So thank you guys and continue to do it. We're not done. The reality is we there's still a need. Um, so with me now is Laura McGuire. Wire. She's on staff at the American Red Cross, and I'd love for you to just continue to talk about that need that we have. Sure. Right now, the biggest and the best thing to do is to make a financial donation. Financial donations can get into the hands of people immediately. And we've all seen the devastation. It's awful. People need shelter. So we've got shelters open. They need warm blankets. They need hot meals. They need to be hugged and taken care of. And that's what we're really here to do. So we appreciate your support, the station support, but most of all, all the donors that have really came 
out today to mm -hmm. donate. That is just, we're so appreciative. Absolutely. And so talk about why that financial donation is so important compared to a physical donation. Absolutely. It can go in the hands of people immediately. Mm -hmm. There's no big or small donations. Every donation is so, so important. And if you're not able to donate financially, we ask that you donate blood. We have a historical low level of blood and so we're asking please go to redcrossblood.org make an appointment we are at the point where hospitals might need to cancel elective surgeries mm -hmm. and we never want that to happen we are so grateful for donors that have rolled up their sleeves the last couple of months so when the tornado did hit we had blood on the shelves that we were able to put to use immediately mm -hmm. so again we have a constant need for blood and giving blood is also an alternative. The other thing that you can do is to volunteer. We're always looking for volunteers as well. So um, these are the people that are on the front lines that really do help and are greeting people when they're faced with the worst day of their lives. Absolutely, and so thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. And thank you for those who have donated and for those who will donate. And that's one thing where we're asking you to continue sending those donations right now as we really work hard to send hope down to the South. And again, this is a community that is so important to me personally. My first TV job was in Bowling Green, Kentucky. I also went to college in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Um, I am very, very rooted there. I was just in Bowling Green a couple months ago. Um, some of my best friends from childhood um, that I met living in Houston found out that I loved Bowling Green so much that they moved there. And even when I left and came to Wisconsin, they still love there. The people there are just so amazing, so awesome. Um, you know, I feel like I, who I am is a product of Bowling Green, Kentucky. And so uh, this is an area that definitely needs our help. So if you're in a place and you are able to donate Please do, please do. You can go to channel3000.com. It'll take you to where you need to go, or uh, you can go to redcross.org slash news3 now. And with that, you can also track how much we are raising this evening. All right, let's keep those donations coming. Chris, Laura, thank you. Now let's get a look at your certified most accurate forecast now. Here's meteorologist Dana Fulton. Dana? Earlier today, you might have needed the sunglasses. Now we're shifting to a little bit of a cloudier skies. We look at our visible cloud track. We did see that sunshine earlier. Now the cloud coverage is shifting in. It gave us a really nice orange red sunset just a bit ago. Well, the mostly cloudy sky tonight, and that is going to carry us also into the weekend. Down to the south, showers stretching through Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana. That warmer air staying to the south for us. It will stay pretty cool and seasonable over the next few days. But as this does progress off to the east, we could see some flurries bringing uh, themselves into southern Wisconsin. Also some lighter snow right now to the northwest, but I wouldn't be surprised if we do see some flurries swirling around early Saturday morning. Uh, mostly cloudy skies, temperatures in the middle 20s for us. Afternoon high temperatures will be in the uh, low 30s for us on Saturday. Quickly looking ahead to Sunday, another chilly day. Upper teens early in the day, and then in the afternoon we will be in the lower 30s. High temperatures for us tomorrow again, 33, a variably cloudy sky. That small possibility to see some flurries early in the day. Otherwise, uh, a mostly dry forecast carrying us through the weekend and the start of next week. A brief warm up on Monday in the upper 30s. Otherwise, our other opportunity to uh, our next opportunity to see any sort of light snow or flurry chances building in will bring in again the, uh, for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So we saw, of course, that warmer weather as we looked ahead uh, or went back to last week. And now we're moving to this cooler trend this time of year we should be in the mid to low 30s. So frankly, seeing these temperatures for the weekend, it does feel a little more like December outside, but not to sound too Midwest. It is nicer to not have the wind factored in to be in the low 30s. It's not too bad outside if we don't have the wind for us. An early chance for flurry Saturday, dry all the way through the start of next week. And then for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, we might see a few snowflakes swirling around. Something we're going to continue to keep an eye on. I know uh, Chris Reese was really excited about the possibility to see some snowflakes swirling around on Christmas Day. So he's one of the folks that's certainly going to be keeping a very close eye on that heading into next weekend. And then as we look toward 
towards the end of December right now. That cool trend stays with us and a dry trend expected to, to stay towards the, at that point, end of the month and end of the year. Traffic conditions right now for the Beltline, a little slow and go east and westbound. Now, most of Dane County sitting in a pretty good spot and frankly, it's always nice when we see a lot of green across the area. No accidents to report north and southbound on the interstate in Dane County right now. Uh, nice and smooth. The same goes as we shift down to look at Rock County, downtown Janesville. A few uh, construction spots still. We have some slowdown spots, but nothing abnormal for a Friday evening and the interstate for Rock County right now north and southbound. It uh, does look pretty smooth for us this evening to get from the Beltline to Janesville, sending in about a 25 minute drive, 17 minutes to get from Middleton to Sauk City and then downtown to Sun Prairie at about 19 minutes for us this evening. So overall, uh, a pretty average Friday evening commute for us, which is always good news to see that that green color popping up on our traffic conditions. That's a quick look at traffic. Dana, thank you. Skydiving, of course, isn't for the faint of heart, but it takes a true daredevil to jump out of a plane over a volcano. Jeremy Roth shares the story of one man's incredible feat. Watch a former Chilean Air Force pilot use a wingsuit to become the first person ever to skydive into, then out of, an active volcano. Red Bull captured Sebastian Alvarez's incredible and death-defying flying feet into the crater of Chile's active Villarica volcano, nicknamed the Devil's House. Alvarez's plan involved gaining an amazing amount of vertical speed and then opening his wingsuit to transfer the speed horizontally, propelling himself back up and out. Volcanic activity and harsh weather only allowed Alvarez a short window to make the flight, not to mention the volcano's mere 200-meter wide crater. But eventually, all of the elements aligned to allow this fearless flyboy to pull off the surreal, sensational, and singular skydive swoop. Nice. Watch Target employees swoop in and turn a delivery debacle into an early holiday gift for one Arizona grandmother. Deborah Lewis says she tried to return six Nintendo Switch consoles that were delivered to her by mistake, but with no luck. When the company found out, they sent two employees with another surprise for this grandmother of eight. On behalf of Target and your local Target store right down the street, we are going to give these to you to give to what? your children. Lewis was delighted and moved by the old Switch which switcheroo and says she will no doubt gift the game consoles to her grateful grandkids. And my heart feels so warm. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Up next at five, health officials are seeing a significant drop in teen substance use. We'll have details after the break. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Guys, do you suffer from erectile dysfunction? Now there's great news. Peak Performance for Men will help you regain your performance and confidence naturally. Peak Performance for Men uses an advanced form of acoustic wave therapy, clinically shown to open up and regrow blood vessels, restoring normal and natural function ability where it counts most. There are no needles, no surgery, and best of all, no pain. Call now and receive an ultrasound. Your initial consultation, all for free, in over $300 value. Call Peak Performance for Men today. Finding the right ingredients for a healthy lifestyle can be tricky. That's why SSM Health and News 3 Now are here to help. Our Time for Kids recipe for health experts use online conversations and on-air reports to answer your health question. So tell us, what topics would your family like to hear about? What questions do you have? Use the handy feedback form on our Time for Kids page to share what matters most to your family's health. And together, let's take time for kids. Buffalo sauce, hot honey flipped, boneless dipped, RV razzled, buffalo dazzled, hot honey, five dollar boneless wings and crinkle fries deal. RVs, we have the meat. Menards Enchanted Forest has been a Christmas tradition for over 60 years. We invite the whole family to come take a stroll and find everything you need to deck the halls. Find that perfect tree to display your ornaments ribbons, garland, and tree toppers. Create a warm and cozy space with decorative accents and hanging decor. Find it all at Menard's Enchanted Forest. Those brave men and women of our armed forces. 
generations of them. Why should today's burdens fall back onto them? They were there for us. Now let's be there for them. Your local Wisconsin energy providers and the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund are working together to deliver Wisconsin veterans in crisis heat, power, and help staying in their home. But they can't do it alone. Call to donate today. Introducing Oakmont Senior Community in Verona. New luxury apartments for seniors 55 plus. Professionally managed by award-winning Attic Angel Community. Call Brenna today for a tour and reserve your place at Oakmont. Embrace winter with a cabin getaway. Madison Magazine takes you on a tour of amazing Wisconsin rentals. From rustic to whimsical, high-end to historic, your snowy escape awaits. Check out Madison Magazine online and on newsstands now. Madison Magazine makes holiday gift giving easy this season. Get 50% off one and two year subscriptions. Go to store.madisonmagazine.com, enter promo code WINTER2021, and give the gift of Madison Magazine. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Welcome back. A new survey shows a significant drop in substance use among teens this year. Nandy Gaither takes a closer look at the numbers. A promising trend for a concerning problem, teens and substance use. To watch the parents at the bedside going through this and to see the child and the child you know, suffering through this as well from what was really just a poor choice. It, it's hard to watch. At Orlando Health Arnold Palmer Hospital for Children, Dr. Jenna Wheeler has seen firsthand the dangers of teens using drugs and alcohol, but an annual survey from the National Institute on Drug Abuse shows the largest single year decline in illicit drug use in more than 45 years. For 8th and 12th graders, it's down about 5% since 2020 and declined nearly 12% for 10th graders. If this is on a downswing, what are we doing correctly and how do we continue to propel it forward so that kids use less and less? The research suggests other substance use went significantly down as well, including alcohol, marijuana, and vaping. But researchers cautioned there were limitations to the survey. Fewer students participated this year than in prior years, and most completed the poll while at home for virtual schooling, where answers may not have been as honest. Wheeler says it's up to adults to keep the trend going in the same direction. Just continuing a dialogue, talking with them, making this something that they're aware of. They know the side effects, they know the risks to themselves, and hopefully that'll continue to push them away from using drugs. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. New York's iconic pizza and bagel stores are being hit by pandemic-induced inflation and supply chain shortages. Many pizza stores in the city have recently had to put their prices up by as much as 50% to cover the skyrocketing cost of raw materials. The cost of ingredients, paper plates, and labor have been going up since the outbreak of the pandemic. Meanwhile, it's increasingly harder for local bagel stores to find cream cheese that they use in the filling for a breakfast staple of New Yorkers. The aisle for cream cheese was completely empty, so um, it was just really a shock because I didn't know. It kind of just hit, it was just like all of, all of a sudden out of the blue. So then my husband and I drove to New Jersey. They had some um, and they were limiting it, uh, one per customer, which a box of cream cheese is going to be enough for like a day. The cream cheese shortage was intensified by a cyber attack on the country's largest cream cheese producer, Schreiber Foods, which had to close for several days in October. Stay with us for a final check of your first warn forecast in just a moment. This right here is confidence in a bottle. It just gives you such a boost of confidence. Not only does it change you on the outside, but something in the inside, knowing that you're looking better. It makes me feel so much more confident than I've ever felt in my life. I'm Jonathan Greenhut, the CEO of Plexiderm. And when we first released Plexiderm, our mission was to help people reduce the appearance of their wrinkles and under eye bags in minutes with a simple serum. After two years of reading thousands of reviews, 
news, I realized Plexiderm changes people on the inside. It improves their lives dramatically. My real true opinion is holy words I can't say on camera. <laughs> That was me a couple of years ago when I first tried Plexiderm. I think it just exuded this confidence. Really, there are no other options. Plexiderm is the only thing that works. It was life-changing. It was the best decision I ever made. I'm still using it. The Plexiderm effect is more than shrinking under eye bags from view. It's more than getting rid of the appearance of crow's feet. It's more than saying goodbye to the look of those 11 lines between your eyes. The real effect of Plexiderm is self-confidence. It's celebrating this holiday season with friends and family, knowing that you look and feel your best. So join us in 2021 and take the Plexiderm 10-minute challenge and look in the mirror and say, wow, I feel great. I'm Neela. I'm 61 years old. I'm a personal trainer. It's so important to be in good health and to be fit and take care of yourself. How it makes you feel inside is amazing. And yet, when you look in the mirror, what you see necessarily isn't what you feel inside. Plexiderm, it fixes all that. It makes you feel as good outside as you do inside. Take the Plexiderm 10-minute challenge and see real results. Guaranteed. Try it for only $14.95 this holiday season at PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen. Important healthcare announcement. If people tell you your TV is too loud, or if listening in some environments has become difficult, we are requesting your participation in a special program called the 30 Day Challenge. Hearing Life Hearing Centers are seeking people with hearing difficulties to evaluate a new digital mini hearing aid now being released. To take part in this event, you must call. Please get a pencil and write down the number below. All people with hearing aids or hearing difficulties are wanted to take part in the 30-day challenge evaluating a new high-tech device that sits discreetly behind your ear. This hearing aid is Bluetooth enabled and is rechargeable. All hearing assessments are performed at no charge for those taking part in the challenge. Participants will try these hearing aids for 30 days. Call the number below and take the Hearing Life 30-day challenge. Well, before we take you to the CBS Evening News, we want to show you just how close we are to meeting our goal for the Red Cross, helping those folks affected by the tornadoes down in Kentucky. You can see there on your screen, we've raised almost $45,000, and we would love to hit $50,000 today. Boy, there are good people out there. Thank you, everyone. If you can help, head to channel3000.com or just point your smartphone at the QR, uh, QR code on the screen, and it will take you to the donation page. We hope you'll consider helping us out. Let's go back to Dana, final check of the forecast. We might see a few flurries tonight and early Saturday morning. Just a small chance to see a few snowflakes. Otherwise, dry for the weekend. Temperatures in the low 30s for afternoon highs. Overnight lows falling down to the teens. And then dry heading into the start of next week and start of winter on Tuesday. Dana, thanks. We're back in 30 minutes for News 3 Now at 6. CBS Evening News is next.